out as RA according to the conventional medicine. And whereas 48 patients, 48 patients who, who are diagnosed by a clinician as Amavata have also approved RA in their uh, medical uh, documents. So then we also searched, I also searched. You see, follow up is very important. Just a patient comes and then takes something and leaves you, what is the use? In that, that is also there. You see, the first 13 patients, they had only some single visit. I have never seen that face on, once again in our department. 13 patients. But one year, we have 28 patients data. And two years, we have 25 <coughs> patients data. And five years, we have 10 patients data. So exact information of these 10 patients, I can give anyone if they want. Everything, the laboratory data, ayurvedic assessments, as you see, one handout given to is uh, Amavata uh, case sheet, CRF. And we document nowadays every patient according to that case sheets. And then confirm that uh, documentation. Now, I don't want to go li little detail about Amavata. Everyone knows there is a detail, Nidana Pururupa Rupa Upashe Samprapti is described for disease, just like Vata Shonita also. And uh, everyone knows in this audience. But what we did is, can we follow the conventional approaches followed by our friends in the modern medicine and adopt that to de develop certain uh, criteria, flow charts, and assessment, uh, this one, for these Amavata patients. One of them, first thing what we do is to develop the diagnostic criteria for Amavata. Remember, this needs to be validated and then accepted by every Ayurvedic community. This is only our brainchild. I don't say that it is the Siddhanta. Because if it has to become Siddhanta, means Charaka has told. I don't say RCT or these things. Charaka has told. Bahujanaihi bahuvidam pariksha yat pramani kritam tat Siddhanta. It should be accepted by all. It should be tested by all. It should be proved by all. So, First thing, we developed a diagnostic chart. Then we developed a flow chart for evaluation, management, and assessment of Amavata patients. At least if an Amavata patient comes to our department, there are eight, six clinicians in our department. At least we six of us <laughs> for the same standards. At least for the sake of documentation and outcome, uh, this one, we follow the same standard. In our institutions, we are following it. And then criteria for uh, monitoring Amavata cases, their progress and disease activity, the criteria are to be developed, and then criteria for determining clinical remission in Ayurveda. So we have developed some some of the papers which are given to you are there in that. We have developed some this one for that. Some of them I am just projecting you here. And last is a standard CRF which is also there. So on basis of which we have to collect each and every information on the patient from time to time. Sorry. You see, this is this is a flow chart on basis of which we approach Amavata patients in our department. First, we have to establish the diagnosis of Amavata. That is by following the criteria developed for diagnosis of Ayurveda. It is there in your this one here. And then, once a confirmed Amavata case is there, then we have to assess the prakriti, bala, and sattva of the patient, ama, agni, and kosta of the patient. My dear friends, when I say prakriti and these things, we have developed for each of these things a separate assessment methods. And as Dr. Ram Kumar always says, it needs to be validated, which we are starting working on that now. Because without validation, such assessments will never be internationally accepted. But we have developed for that. So Prakriti we assess by two ways. Patient's self-assessment of Prakriti and physician's assessment of Prakriti of his patient. Everything we have matched with the patient and physicians. So then we have to match it how, how much correlation is there between those things. So this is a flow chart. Then you have to evaluate, then initiate treatment, and then uh, 
goal which as i have told you to look at what percentage of dhatu samyata we have arrived i am very sure we cannot achieve 100% dhatu samyata in any individual we should define that just like they say scr 20 acr something like in the western medicine also we should say dhatu samyata of 20% level 40% level 60% level 80% level something we are developing scoring system for that and this is another flow chart of uh, this one because many times we do not know shall we continue the treatment or refer the patient to someone at what level we should refer him and if we have to refer to whom actually ideally we should have a specialist of amavata or specialist of vata shonita in ayurveda i don't think they are that and there is no any such plan the one thing the center of excellence dr ammanwar should do is they should develop some additional uh, fellowships or something like that some specialist in that particular disease or this things should come up in ayurveda also so that i can refer to him and say that okay now it is your responsibility to carry on the treatment so this procedure is developed on that and this is the monitoring of the <coughs> amavata patients rheumatoid arthritis or amavata patients the each visit we should monitor these things degree of joint pain duration of morning stiffness severity of fatigue presence of actively inflamed joints on examination limitation of function each visit this has to be doc documentation means objectively you should use either standard standard assessment uh, criteria or if you develop something you should validate it we have developed something from our own side we are trying to validate it that also and periodically evaluate uh, for disease activity or progression and then other parameters for assessment assessing the response to treatment how we will know that the patient has improved or not improved deteriorated just the thinking is not over and a student coming tomorrow to you say that i have treated this amavata shonita or amavata patient is yes, uh, excellent result what you will see you should show him some show him something objectively okay this is what i say is excellent result or something like that so that documentation process is necessary and these are the how you will say that the disease is in the remission stage because there is no cure for i believe there is no cure for amavata there is no cure for uh, this one also but only what we have to say is <coughs> there should be a stage of remission or a stage of exacerbation so when we say a stage of remission if the patient meets this criteria then we say we should say that patient is in remission now all this work has been done why because fortunately we had an opportunity to tie up with one of the ancient most university in japan which is called as okayama university and they have what is called as international clinical research program uh, just one or two years back they have started it and under which they collaborate with some universities from other countries and develop a collaborative research everything should be done in japan but they collaborate experts from other countries or other <laughs> universities and uh, <coughs> one of the professor professor doy he had a two or three meeting with me in manipal and he was always asking me which clinical condition dr kamat you can say is a ideal clinical condition which is good for japan also which is good you say in ayurveda can offer better uh, chances also so i thought 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 after going through all these things i have suggested him two clinical conditions one is amavata i told him in western medicine rheumatoid arthritis and the other is post paralytic uh, post stroke uh, paralysis rehabilitation of the stroke patient so these two clinical conditions i told him and uh, there are two or three presentations in okayama university to hear about that and after that presentations we practically now agree that we will go ahead with at least first clinical conditions that is rheumatoid arthritis and uh, that process is going on now last year we had a just a demo they wanted to see what you are going to do i will ask i will tell you one important thing so i told that i want sand of all treatment the professor from that uh, this hospital uh, famous uh, rheumatology hospital he was looking sand why do you want to send to treat a patient so 
Okay, then they procured sand and all those things. Then one in one presentations, I told how we will use this sand. Okay, we will give you Alukas Veda. Where we will give you Alukas Veda and this one as per the flow chart, it is there. Then he told me and looked at me, rheumatoid arthritis is an inflammatory condition, joint is inflamed, you are giving over that some fermentation, <coughs> which will increase inflammation, he told me. But at that moment I had no answer because I really do not know whether it is correct or not. But when we really demonstrated it to the patient, then he was stub bomb. I will show that patients this one also. So he was a stub bomb. Huh? Then he understood that the principles are very important in approaching a patient rather than just thinking from one heart, uh, one way thinking from what they have in the Western medicine. Anyhow, so this is uh, the place where we did Misasa Medical Center, and three hospitals are selected for that. In uh, one of them is a well-known rheumatological hospital under WHO. They are doing lot of clinical studies on the biological agents, and that doctor told me, doctor. We have very, very good and efficient treatment for rheumatoid arthritis, but unfortunately, I do not know. Only 50% will benefit, whether this patient will benefit or this patient will benefit, I don't know anything about this. You have to give it blindly to your patient. Some patient may develop side effects, complications and these things. Some patient may come out successful, happy and this thing. He told me this is my clinical problem. And if there is an answer for this which Ayurveda can offer, then Japan will definitely, uh, Japan population or Japan people and Japan scientists will definitely accept it. That is one he told me. And uh, <coughs> Professor Doi, Hiroki Doi is the leader of this clinical research program under which we are doing research on uh, rheumatoid arthritis. And there we have targeted everything approach based on Amavata. That is why I am telling rheumatoid arthritis and Amavata, not based on Vata Shonita. Remember. And, uh, This is in the north, we have that hospitals. In the north of Japan, everyone know about this, this one. Yeah, five minutes. And five minutes, I'm finishing also. <laughs> so this is the hospital. This is the team. The center one is the Japanese doctor there. And myself, and there is a PhD student who is working for this. And uh, the other two are my therapists, to whom I took there for uh, this one. So the first thing is the right treatment for the right patient. This is our thumb rule. In Ayurveda, this is our thumb rule, the right treatment for the right patient. And the second thing is we added in another this one, the treatment should answer all the elements. It should promote, it should prevent, it should treat, it should care. All the elements of a clinical practice. So this is the flow chart developed for approaching those patients. There are three targets developed. The first target is targeting at Ama, Agni by means of Langana, Diets, Deepana, Tikta and Katu, Dravyas which are commonly used in the this one. Target two, we target the Doshas, Dushas and Shrotases involved in a disease. And target three is improving the uh, general well-being and this thing of the patient by improving the ojas or by administering rasayana. This is the uh, concept of that approach, but we have not done that yet. I will only show you two patients because they just wanted to see what we are doing. That's why they selected 10 patients, but only two patients came to accept it. So just as a demo version last year which we did in August. We may be continuing it later now. So this is the Japanese, this one. Okay, this is one patient, you see 57 years, and uh, she had anti-rheumatic drugs for about eight years, now on natural supplements. She is off any anti-rheumatic drugs now, and underwent both knee, replace, knee replacement three years back. And you see, we, we assess that patient according to an Ayurvedic assessment, Prakriti, all those things what I have told you we have said and assessed on the basis of hard papers, please remember. And the Prakriti doshas came as 36, 24 and 29. Vikriti doshas came as 50.2 as Vata, 31.3 as Pitta and 19.5 uh, as Kapha. <coughs> and this is how we approach that patient. 
Shadhar Anam and Dawi Patti Karachuvana had the best. And then we gave him Valka Saida from this day to this day. Eight days treatment was given. And uh, this is how patient responded for the pain using visual analog scale. You can see the upper one is the patient's pain before starting and after eight days. A little bit difference. Oops. You see, this is like, why it is? So this is very interesting. You see, this patient had tender and swollen joints. Tender T is mentioned as tender joints. S is mentioned as swollen joints. You see, that is before the treatment. And within eight days, within eight days, you see the patient's joints. There is only one active joint. Only one active joint left with the patient. So this is another patient. She is already on methotrexate and prednisolone, but still she wanted to see what is ayurvedic treatment. So we strictly believed that we will not give combination treatment. Some ayurveda, some allopathy. No combination treatment. No internal medicines are given to her, but only we gave her Valuka Sveda. And this is her Prakriti and Vikriti assessment. This is, sorry. Sorry. There is some problem with the computers. So this is her pain. So this is results in simple this one of both the patients. You see, total joint counts was six before, two afterwards for one patient, seven before, one after after the treatment. And swollen joint count was five before treatment, zero after treatment, and it is four before treatment, zero after treatment. And HAQs, 12. The score was 12 before treatment, 6 after treatment. See the other side, it was 27. And then it has come to 21. And uh, these are the objective scales for pain and uh, this one. One is uh, visual analog score and another is questionnaire, pain assessment questionnaire. So 38, 41, 37, 42 and 7, 6, 3, 2. The, not only the patient, even the student and the professor who was Moses, he was surprised if in eight days of treatment, nothing <laughs> only sad and these things given to the patient and uh, given as a basic principles of Ama, Agni and Shrutas and uh, this one has given some relief to the patient. So that is why now they have agreed that there is an element to be continued this treatment in a properly structured protocol which they are working out now probably we will continue afterwards i will conclude with these two words so we should the buddhi utpada hetu nam adhyayana adhyapana tadvidya sambhashana sambhashana katanaya roga kushidye so you all of you know this there are three elements very important adhyayana adhyapana and tadvidya sambhasha and all three should <coughs> support one another adhyayana adhyayana should be based on what is Rather than that, next slide will give you a good this one. So education, practice, and research. So this is the tripod of any science. And Ayurveda should strongly depend on this. So the education should be based on what is practiced. And the practice should be based on what is taught and what is researched. And the research should be done based on what is the need of the teaching and what is the need of the practice. So it is a uh, triangle. If we follow this in our critical practice, Probably it will be very helpful for us and documentation is the only key rule to meet all the three requirements. So this, someone told in the morning. So what I conclude is educational activities should be given first preference in order to, this conclusion I have given to the <coughs> panel. Make Ayurvedic research meaningful. Doctors and medical students should be targeted in the educational program. University should organize such education program. Ayurvedic treatments are well accepted by patients as well as the all volunteers. Some of the volunteers also treated with some Ayurvedic treatment. Further scope exists for extensive research on RA or Amavata. So this is the conclusion which we draw our last visit to Japan. This is the team which we work for the program. And overall my summary of this presentation is Clinicians must commit to an individualized approach to treatment. 
and then one size does not fit all. Switch as necessary to an alternative therapeutic agent to the event of treatment failure. In Ayurveda, this is very much necessary. We have to understand where we fail, when we fail, and if we fail, what we have to do. This is very, very necessary. And then establish good partnership and open communication with the patient and monitor treatment and response regularly. This is the recent, there is a, this one in uh, Psychiatry Journal, one article, Are We Shy of Research, something like that. The future belongs to those who fuse intelligence with the faith and who, with courage and determination, grope their way forward from chance to choice, from blind <coughs> adaptation to creative <coughs> evaluation. This is not necessary. That's a repetition. So this is a serene scene from my uh, hometown, Manipal. Uh, whether it's a rising sun or uh, this one, you decide. And this is the uh, knowledge of the city of knowledge we call Manipal. Or uh, this is the center, university, uh, where these thoughts have come to you. <coughs> and uh, I thank you for patient. I think I have taken five minutes more. Sorry for that. Mm -hmm.